we're constantly asking how long we have to wait for things. And uh, in the context of probability theory, uh, it, it turns into the technical question called the expected time to failure or the mean time to failure. Some examples might be that an insurance company wants to know for a given policyholder the expected time before that policyholder dies. Uh, a mechanical engineer wants to know the expected time before uh, a button that's being pushed once per second is expected to fail. And I want to know when the part that my body shop has been waiting for is expected to come in. Okay. The mean time to failure problem we can formalize in terms of flipping coins. So we're going to flip a coin until a head comes up and we're going to think of a head as being a failure and a tail as a success. Um, so the, let's assume the probability of getting a head, the probability of failure is P. Again, this is not a fair coin. It's a, it's a, a coin that may be biased in either direction. And let's let F be the number of flips until the first head comes up, the, the number of flips until the first failure and if we're counting as flips as time, it's the time to fail. So what we'd like to know is what's the expectation of F? What's the expected number of flips before a head comes up? Well, let's do some, in order to calculate that expectation, we need to know some probabilities. So what's the probability that F equals 1? Well, that's the same as saying that that's getting a head on the first flip. It's the probability until you get an H. Uh, that you get just an H on the first flip, and that has probability P. What's the probability that F equals 2? Well, that's the probability that you flip a, t a tail and then a head, and that has probability Q times P, because we're assuming the flips are independent, so it's the probability of a tail, which is Q, times the probability of a head, which is P. Similarly, the probability of F equals 3 is the same as the probability of flipping tail, tail, head, and it's Q squared P, and of course, the uh, probability density function of f, the number of steps until you'd flip ahead at, uh, at n, the probability that you have to flip uh, n times before you get the first head is q to the n minus 1p. By the way, a random variable with whose probability density function has is, is this value is called a geometric distribution. They come up all the time. All right, so what's the formula for the expectation of f? It's simply, of course, by definition, it's the, expect, it's the sum over all the possible values of f, which in this case are integers n greater than 0, of n times the probability that f equals n. We figured out that the probability that f equals n is q to the n minus 1 times p. And now I'm going to observe that we really do know how to evaluate this sum easily enough. I'm going to factor out the p, and it becomes a sum over n greater than 0 of q to the n minus 1 times n. And then I can simplify matters if I replace uh, n by n minus 1, and then I get a q to the n power. So this is equivalent to p times the sum over n greater than or equal to 0 of n plus 1 q to the n. Now this is a familiar generating function. It's simply equal to uh, 1 over 1 minus q squared, as we've seen already. So in short, the expectation of f is p times 1 over the square of 1 minus q. Well, uh, so let's pull them together there. Of course, 1 minus q is p. So it's p times 1 over p squared, or 1 over p. And we get this really very clean answer. The expected number of flips before you get ahead is 1 over the probability of a head. So for example, with a fair coin, where p is a half, the expected number of flips until you get the first head is 2. It's 1 over a half. If you had a biased coin where the probability of getting a head was uh, 1 in 3, 1 third, then in fact uh, the expected number of flips until you got ahead was 3. Okay. Um, that's a nice clean answer, but we got it in this way that doesn't really give much intuition. So let's look at another naive way to uh, derive the expected time to the first head without having to worry about generating functions and all that sophisticated stuff about series, which is easy to forget. So let's look at the outcome tree that describes this experiment of flipping until you get the first head. So starting at the root, uh, with probability p, you flip a head immediately and you stop. Or with probability q, you flip a tail, and then with probability p, you finally flip the head and stop. 
uh, if you haven't flipped the, the head he, uh, by the end of the first uh, second step, then that is a possibility that you, with probability Q, flip the tail, and then there's a possibility that you stop after the third step with a head, and so on. That's how this tree goes. Now, the looking at the structure of this tree, it's an infinite tree, but it's very repetitive. In fact, if we call the tree B, then what we're seeing is that this whole subtree is a copy of B. So now I have a nice recursive but very finite description of this whole infinite tree. B is a tree that has a left branch of P that, uh, that ends in a leaf, or a right branch with probability Q, followed by a repeat of the tree B. So now I can apply total expectation to find the expectation of F. F is the expected number of steps I make in this tree until I finally make the left branch to an H. How do I figure out what the expected time in the tree is until I make that left branch of flipping ahead finally? Well, using total expectation, what I can do is branch on whether or not the first flip is ahead. So the expectation of f according to total probability, uh, total expectation is going to be the expectation of f given that the first flip is ahead times the probability p that it is ahead. And the other term is that it's the expectation of f given that the first flip is a tail times q, the probability that the first flip is a tail. Well, let's look at, well, first of all, let's look at this term. What is the expected uh, number of flips until you get ahead, given that you got ahead? Well, it's one. So this term is easily taken care of. We understand that one. What about this term? This is the expected number of flips until you get the first tail. Um, uh, uh, sorry, it's the, it's the expected number of flips until you get the first head, given that your first step was a tail. Well, what that means is that we are here after the tail, and we're asking what's the expectation of f, the number of flips that you get starting at b, when you do one flip that takes you to the start of b again. And the answer is, obviously, 1 plus the expected number of flips in b, which is expected expectation of f. In short, this term, the expectation of f given that the first flip is a t, is a tail, is simply 1 plus the expected number of flips that we're trying to figure out. Now look at this. I have a very simple arithmetic formula now. Expectation of f is 1 times p plus 1 plus f times q. There it is. And now I can solve for e of f. Well, just taking a quick look at this, this is going to be Q, the, this is going to yield a Q term, and P plus Q is 1, and this is going to be Q times E of F, and there's an E of F there. Um, if I pull the E of F over, I'm going to do a little arithmetic. I'm going to leave the rest to you and realize, again, that the answer is what we had before. The expectation of F is equal to 1 over P. So let's do one more almost silly example for fun to remember what the significance of 1 over P is. Um, suppose I'm thinking about the space, space station Mir. Now, it's spinning around, uh, and there's a lot of garbage out there that it's likely to hit a lot of space junk. And suppose that based on our previous statistics and, and uh, estimations of the small sort of small stuff that has been hitting Mir that it could survive, uh, that we estimate that there's about a 1 in 150,000 chance that in any given hour it's going to run into some... Uh, intolerable uh, collision with a, with space junk or a meteor that's going to destroy it. So suppose the space station Mir has a 1 in 150,000 chance of destruction in any given hour. So how many hours do we expect until destruction? Well, it's 1 over 150,000 or 150,000 hours, which trans So much for silly space station examples. Let's wrap up with an intuitive argument that could be made rigorous, but I'm not going to because I think it's clearer just left in this informal way that makes it uh, intuitive why you would expect that, of course, the expected time to failure is 1 over the probability of failing on a given flip. Well, how many failures do we expect in one try? Well, by definition, it's the uh, expectation of getting ahead on the first flip, it's P. 
Okay, now if you flip n times, you expect to get n times as many failures as you'd expect in one try. So the expected number of fails in n tries is n times p. That's an intuitive argument. In fact, it's the rigorously correct argument. Remember that uh, if we flip n times, we're counting the number of heads in n flips. That's a binomial distribution we already figured out in a couple of ways that its expectation is n p. But never mind that. Uh, it's just sort of, I think it's intuitively clear that if you expect p heads in one try and you do n tries that are all independent, you're going to expect to get n times p failures. Okay, or heads. Now, what's the expected number of tries between failures? Well, if you think about that, I've done n tries and I've got n p failures. So if I divide the number of tries by the number of failures, that by definition is the average time between the failures. It's the expected time to a failure. So I divide the number of tries by the number of fails, which by definition is the average number of tries between failures, and it's equal to n over np, which is equal to 1 over p. And that's an argument that I hope you will remember.